Hello, welcome to episode 13 of the Elden Woodcraft podcast. My name's Emma and this is my podcast all about my crafty life. If you have visited before, thank you very much for coming back and having another look at what I've been making. If this is your first time visiting, a big hello to you, thank you ever so much and I hope you enjoy what you see. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and uh, press subscribe press subscribe to be informed about when uh, other po- my other podcasts are published. That didn't go very well. This is about the, or oh, probably about the 13th attempt. It's episode 13, so it probably is about 13 attempts at saying hello. Um, it's been a month since I last podcast. I had planned to come back before Christmas, but um, the Christmas rush just didn't allow for it. Anyway, I am back now. It's December the 2nd. No, it's not. It's January the 2nd, 2018. A very happy new year to you. I hope you all um, are well. I hope you all had a good Christmas and a peaceful and restful couple of weeks over the festive period. We we had a quiet Christmas with family. It was very lovely. Um, we were in Cornwall and we were back home for the new year where we uh, didn't really do very much. We had a lovely family meal together on New Year's Eve and sat and watched TV in the evening, watched the fireworks from London um, and that sort of thing. Anyway, all the details about where you can find me online are in the description box below. Um, and that's where you'll also find the show notes. The show notes will also appear in the Ravelry group and there's a link to that below as well. Uh, Details of everything that I'll be talking about today will be in those show notes with clickable links so you can go and have a look at Ravelry pages and so on if you're interested in finding out any more information. So what will we be talking about today? I've got the usual selection of finished objects, There are a handful of whips um, and then in the final notes and queries section I will be talking about, um, I'll be announcing the the hat knit along winners. I will be talking about future knitting plans and a cowl to go along with that. What else will I be talking about? The show notes are here. Oh, and I um, will we'll see how this goes, um, but I was asked a query about um, a particular aspect of my Vertices Unite shawl, um, and I will see if I can attempt to answer that on uh, this podcast. So let's dive into the uh, finished object section. The first finished object is actually something that I can't show you. If you remember from the last um, podcast, I was knitting a pair of socks for um, Sarah Holmes and her Marie Curie Quest sock project. I think that's the best way to describe it. Sarah had set herself the challenge of knitting 277 I think it was off the top of my head socks for every resident of a Marie Curie hospice in the UK who was in over Christmas Um, and Sarah absolutely got reached her target um, and beyond that so many congratulations Sarah my one pair of socks made it up to Sarah just in time for Christmas Um, I'll insert a picture of them here So these were knit out of um, West Yorkshire spinners in their Marie Curie exclusive colourway. So they were a lot of fun to knit and I'm delighted that Sarah reached her target. Sarah has um, bravely taken on a new Marie Curie challenge and has recently announced over the last few days uh, some of the details of that. She's going to provide more information as the days go by but basically she has um, managed to persuade and I'm sure there wasn't much persuasion needed 12 um, 
12, I think they're UK based indie dyers to dye up a um, an exclusive colourway related, oh, it's, well it's called, I'm not explaining this very well am I? So Sarah's new challenge is the Marie Curie flower power challenge and once every month there will be an exclusive colourway dyed by a UK based indie dyer and um, she's also um, asking some UK based bag makers if they would be prepared to um, make some bags to go along with those yarns. Um, I think that's right. Um, Sarah asked me if I would and of course I'd be very happy to. Um, so I've been um, in conversation with one of the dyers that Sarah had approached. So there will be a collaboration between myself and another dyer later in the year and we'll announce more details of that. So I hope I explained that well enough. I suspect I didn't, um, but all details will be in the show notes um, as I know them so far. Right, on to something I can show you. Um, I showed you this as a, as a work in progress uh, in my last, sorry, I'm just looking, it looked like there was a stitch had got loose, but I don't think it has. Um, this was a, a work in progress in my last podcast. It is now a finished object. It is the Worth the Fuss Shawl, a pattern by Louise Tilbrook. And here it is. It's a really simple, but really effective garter stitch and um, eyelet small one skein shawl in fact it was less than one skein this was the yarn that i had knit my ray tooley hat out of and i had about 90 grams left i still have after finishing this i still have about 10 grams left of that ball maybe a little bit more um, so i could have actually gone on a bit longer on this it's very adaptable um, but i was keen to get it off the off the needles and blocked and um for it to be worn. As you can see, I have got some ends still to weave in, whoops. Um, and it does still need to be blocked. The where, where I block all my shawls is at our dining room table where I'm sat now. I'm The last few episodes I've been sat in that corner, but I've had to move towards the window because it's such a miserable gray day. You might be able to hear the rain against the window and against the table outside, um, but it's so dark. I've got a candle on, I've got a light on over there. Um, so the lighting will be a little bit different today. Apologies for that. Anyway, I'm at the dining room table. It is covered at the moment by a jigsaw. Let me show you what we've been, oh, what we've been doing over Christmas. Do you like a jigsaw? I love a good jigsaw. So we've been doing this um, 1500 piece jigsaw of um, New York. So we've got Central Park and all the new New York Manhattan um, buildings. So uh, we've been entertaining ourselves with that over the, the Christmas break. And for telling you all about the jigsaw is that the jigsaw is set out on the dining room table where I usually block all my uh, shawls so I haven't been able to block this one yet um, when I do it will be very much become a wardrobe staple I love the way that it's um, the way the yarn has knit up all those lovely greys show you that with that anyway you can see it's an asymmetrical triangle Really lovely, such a well-written pattern. The other finished object that I've got to show you is one that you haven't seen before. Um, I can't remember why I cast this on. I wasn't in need of a new one of these because I had just finished one. Um, no idea why. Anyway, um, I must have had the urge to cast on a new hat, having finished my Rituli hat. And I was sorting through my stash and I saw a skein of Hazelknit's Artisan Yarn. 
in the Loch Ness colourway and it said to me that it had to be a hat and so I cast on a slouch head hat by Kelly, Kelly McClure, Kelly, Kelly McClure, Kelly McClure, either way it's um, a pattern that you probably will all know, very straightforward simple to knit hat with some lovely crown decreases. I love the way that that pattern, that all those those colours look. That's the, that's the thing I enjoy most about knitting a hat is those crown decreases. They just create lovely shapes and beautiful patterns with the yarn. Um, and that yarn is coming out, the colouring of that yarn is coming out really well on screen. It's a bit more muted in real life. Um, but the, the colours really sing there. Um, I didn't knit quite um, as long a brim as the pattern called for. You all know my love um, of knitting rib knot um, and so I went for as long as I could. I was just keen to get onto the, the, the very basic um, knitting in the round. Uh, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I haven't worn it out yet. I'm putting it on for its first public airing today. Um, let's see how that turns out. Not like that. I didn't knit it quite as long either as the, as the um, pattern called for. I wanted it to be not quite as slouchy as um, I have seen others. Um, oh, you know my love of me in a hat. Um, anyway, I'm really pleased with it. I will wear it when the weather is cold enough. That's my sock head hat. So those are, let me just check my hair. Those are all my finished objects. Now let's have a look at uh, some works in progress. Okay, the first work in progress is a pair of socks that I have on the go. They are in my lovely Luli bag. I absolutely love that bag. Um, the socks that I'm knitting, just a vanilla pair of socks. The yarn is a Giddy Yarns yarn. Um, I can't remember if I... No, I wouldn't have showed this to you on my last podcast because it hadn't arrived. Um, I think I had ordered it. Um, from Helen at Giddy Yarns and it was a um, oh I can't quite remember anyway it arrived in mid-December along with another skein from Helen um, her hot chocolate yarn which I don't have with me at the moment and um, when I knit that up you will see it it's lovely it's uh, creams and browns and pinks and looks like hot chocolate cream and marshmallows it's fabulous this one is her Robin Redbreast colourway and you can see there it's, it's blowing out a little bit. I wonder if it would be any better on that side. Um, but it's creams and browns and reds and greys and is very evocative of one of my favourite birds. So when I saw this um, pop up on Helen's Instagram feed I had to have it and it's knitting up um, Often I think that yarns look better in when they're balled up, but this just looks brilliant. I'm so pleased with how this sock is coming out. Um, look at those fabulous stripes. It is blowing out a bit, all the cream in it, because I'm so close to the window, it's not really looking brilliant. But um, yeah, I love this. This was my um, Christmas Eve cast on the... Little Bobbin's Knits Christmas Eve cast on. Um, obviously Robin Redbreast is, is a Christmassy, Christmassy bird so it seemed appropriate and it's just a plain vanilla sock. Um, I When I knit self-striping I like to knit the cuff, um, finish the cuff at the end of a um, collar and start the plain stocking stitch knitting at the start of a new colour so that's what I did there so my cuff is slightly longer than I probably normally do and then I did a 
German short row heel um, to make sure that the striping wasn't interrupted. Um, I, I normally knit a heel flap and heel turn heel. Um, I have found in the past that um, other types of heels don't fit me fantastically well. I know that's a common finding of sock knitters, um, but I thought I'd give it another go. The um, tutorial that I followed for this was done was a video tutorial from Ellie at Craft House Magic. It was really helpful. It really helped me understand um, how to do the German short rows and so on. I have done them before, um, but I just wanted to make sure that I had um, some help along the way. So if you haven't knit a German short row heel before and would like some help, I can highly recommend Kelly's uh, Kelly, Ellie's, um, I've been talking to Kelly this morning, um, but I can highly recommend Ellie's um, video uh, on YouTube and I will put a link in, in the show notes for you. So this is my first sock, I haven't got massively far on it, I knit quite a lot over the, the days around Christmas um, and then it has not seen much, um, much action um, since we got back from Cornwall. Uh, but it's just knitting up beautifully. I cannot wait to get these on my feet. They're not that Christmassy that they can't be worn at other times of the year. I don't think if I saw someone walking down the street in a pair of socks like that in um, springtime, I'd think, oh, you can't wear those, they're Christmassy. So um, I'm going to get those finished. And um, yeah, really pleased with that yarn. Um, Helen at Giddy Yarns does some lovely yarns. Um, particularly her self-striping yarns. So if you manage to catch one of those, um, one of one of Helen's updates, um, you're a lucky knitter. So that's my sock um, work in progress. I have a shawl somewhere. Where is it? It's right in front of me. This is a new cast on. This was an unexpected cast on. Um, I know that I have said in the last two episodes probably that um, I was going to knit the Second Avenue Shawl by Amy Miller. That still hasn't been cast on but there will be some more about that shortly. Um, I saw this particular um, shawl in a picture on Instagram round, over Christmas time. It's a new pattern that has been published by um, Paulina Caru of Lena Knits and um, when I saw it I thought oh this has absolutely got to be my next cast on and I had the perfect yarn for it so let me show you the picture it's the Carade shawl and um, it's a wrap really you can see it's a long rectangular lace pattern wrap I think it's absolutely stunning. I love the yarn that um, Paulina has used for her uh, photography here. That's a Tuscan Knits yarn. I would absolutely love to get my hands on some Tuscan Knits yarns, but um, I am a little bit um, fearful of customs charges and things like that. So I haven't ventured to um, Maria's shop yet, but maybe one day I will. Um, the yarn that I had in my stash though will hopefully do this um, beautiful wrap uh, what's the word I'm looking for it will be a fine substitute for Maria's yarn so I am knitting it's a it's a two skein shawl and I had two skeins of this yarn um, this is the yarn I'm using. It will blow out terribly because of the light, but you can see it is um, Warm Moonshine from Belinda Harris Reed.co.uk. It's a um, it's an undyed yarn. Uh, luxury British hand knit design. Um, so the yarn is in the warm moonshine, what she calls her warm moonshine colourway. Um, and it's a 70% alpaca, 20% silk and 10% cashmere. Um, it's four ply. It is the softest yarn I have ever 
handled. It is just beautifully soft. It's got a very slight halo, if you can see that there, just about. Um, oh, it's just lovely. So, so soft. No prickle. It's 70% uh, alpaca. Alpaca does affect me, um, but this, there's not a chance in the world that this would affect anyone. I don't think it is that soft balled up and this is how far I have got so far it's going to be quite difficult to see I haven't done a huge amount um oh, that's coming out actually better than I thought it would you can see that there's a textured lace pattern um, I'm just about heading towards the end of this panel and then we move on to a different pattern the idea behind behind the shawl um, she says it was inspired by the Scottish landscape the heather covered moors rolling hills and me meandering footpaths the gentle soft air and open skies the pretty lace patterns in the shawl hold the memories of the views in the highland highlands Carade was also inspired by the joy of making a new friend it's a shawl that's great to wrap around yourself or a friend when you need to add a layer of warmth, like a hug from a friend. Isn't that lovely? So um, I'm currently working on the moor section, mountains and moors. Um, there will be a mountain section, I think, and a pathway section. Um, it's just a real pleasure to knit. Needles I'm using are um, Chow Goos, I think. They might be Addies. I can't remember. I've lost the um, the needle packet. They look. I would say with the red cord, they're probably Chow Goos, aren't they? Um, but it says they're made in Germany on on the cable, which makes me think they might be Addies. Does it say anywhere? Oh no, it is. Yeah, Addies. Addies made in Germany, they are three and a half millimetre needles. Um, these are my one of my favourite needles that I've knit with. Anyway, doing lots of that. Um, there's not much else to tell you on that, but um, it's a pattern that I will be, or a project that I'll be working on on a regular basis because I really cannot wait to get that uh, finished off. So that's the Carade, Carade Shawl by Paulina Carew. Okay, the uh, final work in progress that I've got to show you is my cardigan. Where is it? Behind me. So this is a project that has been on my needles for almost to the day, one year. I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I haven't finished it, but um, like all good knitters know, there are lots of shiny, sparkly things that come and distract you from doing um, your current works in progress. However, I have um, made a promise to myself that I'm going to focus on this cardigan, finish it, and then I can move on to some more garment knitting, um, which I'll talk about in a little while. So I've made quite a bit of progress on this since I last showed it to you. I think when I last showed it to you, I was still working on the body. That is now complete. I'm just going to untangle it from all the um, wires and things that are holding the arm, uh, arm stitches. Right. Um, I might need to stand up. This is... This is where we've got to so you can see I've done the the collar knitted the body put the arm holes onto holders and I have knit the um, ribbing at the bottom it's coming out quite bright again on screen but it's a little bit more muted than that in real life so it's just very basic cardigan no shaping um, and then I'm now working on the first sleeve. I'm knitting it magic loop. I'm going to sit down again. I'm knitting this magic loop. I'm not 
particularly enjoying the magic loop. Um, the needle is, well, the cable is far too long. Um, I have ordered myself a 16 inch needle to be able to finish the arms off. I have absolutely no problem in a um, stocking stitch tube for the sleeve. Um, I quite like doing that sort of knitting. So um, I know lots of people talk about being on Sleeve Island. I don't think that's going to be a problem for me. I think once the needle arrives, and I've literally just had a um, message notification on my phone to say it's been dispatched. I think when that gets here later this week, these sleeves will um, grow quite quickly. So I've got that one to finish off. I'm toying with the idea of doing a three quarter length sleeve, but we'll see um, see how that um, we'll see how that goes. I'm not quite sure yet. And then I've got the other sleeve to do, and then the button band down each section each section of the front. Um, I think I'm only going to put maybe two or three buttons at the top and leave the rest open. I don't normally close my curtain, close my curtains. I do normally close my curtains. I don't normally close my cardigans though. Um, but I think just a, a, a couple of big buttons at the top will just finish that off. So that is the colouring cardigan. I really, really, really hope that that will be finished off by the time I record again. Um, anything else to tell you on that? Um, just looking at my show notes. It's a pattern by Katrin Schneider. I'm knitting it out of Cascade 220. You can see it's the dark grey colourway. Um, and that's about all there is to tell you on that. So now on to notes and queries. The things I'm going to talk about today, um, I'm going to announce the winner of the, or the winners in the hat knit along. I'm going to talk about future knitting plans and an associated knit along that I want to run with that. Um, and I will do the, um, look at the Vertices Unite um, help that, um, I was asked to talk about. Let, let me do that, get that out of the way, because I'm a little bit unsure about how that's going to go. Right, um, I've got my Vertices Unite shawl somewhere. It was on the floor. Um, my lovely Vertices Unite shawl. I love this so much, and I've had so many positive comments on Instagram and the podcast about this. It's been absolutely my most favourite thing that I have ever, ever knit. Um, and I would definitely want to knit another one. Um, I shared a picture of it on Instagram on New Year's Eve and um, Sarah left a comment saying that she would really like to knit one, but she was a little bit anxious about picking up the stitches. And could I possibly do um, a show and tell on the podcast about how this is done? I don't know if I can, I'm going to have a go. This may or may not work out very well. What I have done though is knit up a little swatch. I started to do a stocking it, stocking it. I started to do a stocking stitch swatch, um, but it kept curling, so I changed to a garter stitch swatch. Doesn't that yarn look beautiful? Um, I have some grey yarn and I have a needle. Um, I am hoping that I'm going to be able to explain to Sarah how the stitches are picked up because it's really such a straightforward thing to be able to do. Um, Sarah, you really don't need to be worried about it. Um, the important thing to remember, I believe, is to follow the instructions in the pattern to the letter. You will be asked, um, I can't remember if it's at the beginning or the end of particular rows to slip the stitch with either with your yarn backwards or forwards I can't quite remember but follow those instructions because by doing that you will get along your selvage this lovely um, run of V's and this is what you're looking to pick up and all you do to pick up a stitch um, this is going to be the tricky bit let me move forward a bit so you see your V 
I turn it to the side, all you need to do is to slip your needle under both stitches of the V. Oh, this is really not working very well. So you can see my needle has gone straight through the two stitches that make up the V. And then all you do, let me get my yarn. Bear with me. Get your yarn and you, oh, it's very awkward. So you loop your yarn round your needle and you just pull that yarn through the stitch and then you go through the next one and with your working yarn, wrap round, pull through, and then you've got two on the needle. You go through the next, wrap round, pull through. So that's how you pick up a stitch. You won't be doing, or some sections you do actually, I think you, you work down a, um, a long run of picking up stitches like that. In other sections, you just pick up one stitch. There's a V section, let me show you. Where's the rack gone? It's in my knee. This, um, as an example, this section here, when you're knitting, you pick up one stitch at the either the end or the beginning, I can't quite remember, of every row, um, rather than working along a long run of stitches like I've showed you, but the principle is the same. So you just put your needle in under the two stitches of the, the V, wrap your working yarn around, this is really messy, sorry, and pull through. And then when you work back, you just knit or purl as um, the pattern instructs you to do. It's really straightforward. Um, Sarah, if you have a go and get stuck, please do get in touch. I'd be very happy to help you through that. Um, also, there are loads of um, videos on YouTube that will explain that so much better than I have just done. Um, but I, I hope you got the idea. I think the main message is it's really straightforward. Just follow the instructions um, and you'll be fine. So that is that bit done and out of the way. Right, let me talk about the, um, the hat knit along. So you've seen in a previous podcast my Rituli hat. That's what I knit for the Eldenwood Craft Hat Along 2017. I extended the deadline by a month, it turned out. Um, I just didn't have a chance or didn't have time to pull the winners Um before Christmas so apologies for that but that did give lots of people plenty of time to uh, to um, put uh, put finished objects into the finished object thread um, I've pulled two winners I pulled one winner from the finished object thread and I pulled another winner from a combination of the Ravelry group chatter thread and the um, posts that were um, posted onto Instagram with the hashtag that was being used for the knit along. So the first winner, let me have a look at my notes. The first winner, um, I don't even think you've seen the prizes yet. So the first winner who was drawn out of the finished objects thread will win one of my Robin bags. It's quite appropriate for the time of year and given that I've been talking about Robin socks. Um, so a Robin drawstring bag and a pattern that has been donated by the very lovely Abby Morris from Abby Morris Design. She donated a copy of her up, down and all around sock pattern. Um, I really like this pattern. I will put a picture of it in here if I can. Um, so the winner that was drawn for that was post number 14 from the finished objects threads and that is um, another Emma um, and that's Em's little nest who um, and Emma lives in New Zealand so this Robin bag will be um, heading down to New Zealand. Emma if you could get in touch with me please and give me your details 
um, I will get that posted off and I will let Abby know um, and she can send you a link for the pattern. I think that's how it's going to work. So congratulations to Emma. The other winner um, was, oh, let me, Emma, sorry, Emma knit um, three hats for the knit along. So thank you for that. There were quite a few people who knit a number of hats. So I was really impressed. And also the other lovely thing about it um, was that I picked up a number of patterns that I really would like to knit myself. Um, I know that um, there are a few sock head hats um, knit and that's why, that was one of the reasons I decided to cast on my sock head. Um, Helen also, um, Helen Eccles um, knit a really interesting woolly, I think it was a woolly worm head hat, Helen, um, but that was lovely, I really liked that. And um, Oh, there was um, there were some barble hats. Um, some it was a really really interesting and lovely um, knit along to um, to see the the finished objects springing up. Anyway, the other winner um, is also going to win a pattern, and that's um, a copy of Naomi's who is Cozy Cute Knits Spellbound socks. Plus, I thought I'll have a, a rootle in my stash. Um, to find a another prize um, and I have decided I don't particularly want to give it up because there are some some minis in here that I really love but um, you all know how much I love Yantan Tethery yarns and I thought that it would be lovely for me to share the love and to send you this beautiful mini skein set that um, I got from Helen um, a little while ago so some really lovely vivid colours in there. Um, there is, uh, that's a full um, 100 grams of yarn. So uh, the winner of that and the Cozy Cutes Knits pattern is um, Sarah, who is sraja1 on Instagram. I'll put the details of both winners on the screen. Um, congratulations, um, is it Sarah? Actually, I don't know, but I'll put your, um, sorry, I'll put your name on the screen. Um, and again, um, if you could get in touch with me and um, let me know your address, I will get that um, sent in the post to you as soon as possible. Okay, so that's the, uh, the hat knit along. Next thing I want to tell you or talk to you about are uh, future knitting plans. If you are um, an Instagrammer, you may well have seen people posting their um, nine, nine patterns, nine items that they want to knit or sew or crochet during 2018. Um, if you have a look for the hashtag, I think it's hashtag 2018 make nine. Um, again, I'll put the proper details in the show notes. Um, and the idea is that you post those nine items that you would like to make and um, see how you get on through the years. It's not prescriptive by any in any way, shape or form, but it gives you something to focus on at the start of the year. Um, and um, just gives you the opportunity to think about how you want to, in my case, knit. Um, sorts of things that you want to knit, go through your Ravelry queue, pull out those items that you keep thinking about knitting but never do. So I, um, over the Christmas holidays, I pulled my nine together. I will put a picture on screen now. Um, and let me just talk you very quickly through the nine items that I have decided to make. So going from the top row, um, firstly, the Charlotte Cardigan by Carrie Bostick Hogue. Then in the middle, there's Jessie's Girl, which is um, just a uh, short sleeve little summery top by Elizabeth Smith. Second Avenue Wrap by Amy Miller. That's the, um, that's the wrap that I've shown you before um, and had wanted to knit for a little while. On the middle row, the Marmore Cardigan by Regina Mossmer. Um, again, you've seen that before, so that is still in the in the plans. Um, Oceana, a shawl by Janina Callio, 
and the V-neck boxy by Hohi Locatelli. And then on the bottom, I've popped in a picture of um, a pair of socks. They, these happen to be the vanilla latte socks. Um, it may be a little bit of a cheat, but I think that basically represents um, the socks that I will always have on the needles throughout the year. Um, in the middle is a um, pattern called Simple Beret by, um, I think it's Isolde Teague. Um, I think that's right, but the, the details for all of these will be in the show notes. Um, and again, I really want to knit that beret, but I think... Um, having now discovered the joy of knit hatting, I think um, hit natting, <laughs> hat knitting, um, I think there will always be a sock, uh, a hat. No, there won't always be a hat on the needles, but there will often be a hat on the needle. So I, I will knit more than one hat next this year. And then finally, another um, sort of, uh, small wrap, this one, uh, or shawl, the Terrain Shawl by Janina Callio um, again. So those are the nine projects that I would really like to work on. There's um, some garments. Um, my knitting of the colour and cardigan has told me that I do like to knit garments. Um, there are the, the garments that I've chosen are fairly straightforward, I think. Um, but there's quite a lot of knitting involved in some of them. What I thought it would be fun to do would be to have a knit along running throughout the whole of 2018 um, in conjunction with these make nine items. So what I thought we could do, if you're interested, um, is if you wanted to take part in this year long knit, knit along, if you were to pick out nine items that you thought you might like to make during the year, now this could be knitted, it could be crocheted, it could be sewn, um, I really don't mind. Um, this is principally a knitting podcast because that's what I do, but um, I'm fully aware that there are people who watch this that do more than um, just knit. You could even include cross stitch in there if you wanted or embroidery, all that sort of thing. But if you pick out nine patterns that you would like to make, put them into a grid like the one I've showed you and um, knit as many of those items throughout the year as you can. Um, I would like to um, run a draw at the end of every quarter. So we'll have January, February, March, at the end of March, beginning of April, draw a prize for um, anyone or from the, the finished objects throughout the previous three months. Um, so we'll have one of those every, so one at January, February, March, one to April, May, June, then July, August, September, and then October, November, December. I know my months of the year. <laughs> um, I think you understand what I'm saying. So anyone who has entered a finished object into the finished objects thread, of which there will be one, um, throughout the three months in the run up to the prize draw will be eligible to be entered into that. Um, so there will be four prize draws throughout the year. And then at the end of the year, I will um, draw a prize from all the finished objects throughout the year. So there will be one final prize at the end of the year. If you have by any remarkable chance managed to complete all nine of your objects, I won't, I'm sure of it, but you never know. Uh, but if you have managed to finish all nine of your objects, that will give you an extra opportunity or an extra um, entry into the year end prize draw. So, um, so yeah, so if you, there'll, there'll be a finished objects thread, which the usual rules apply for that. Just put your finished object into finished object thread. Um, and then at the end of the year, if you have finished your nine objects, put put a grid of those nine objects as a separate entry in the FO thread. In the chatter thread, um, I would ask that you, your first post, post your grid that you want to knit from. I will put mine so you can see, um, see what I'm talking about. Um, and then chat away throughout the year. Um, I've got my notes that I wrote roughly here um, to see if there's anything else that I need to tell you. 
see that's about all there is to tell you really on that um i would really love to um work along with um some of you throughout the year and um encouraging and motivating people to get through their grids um i think that would be really good um so i hope you join in um the other thing i was going to say about that was that if there are any yarn dyers or bag makers or stitch marker makers or anything like that who felt like they wanted to donate a prize to the cal that would be really lovely very gratefully received and um, just get in touch in the usual ways so there will be a hashtag as well to go along with that i haven't quite thought out what the hashtag is i would imagine it's going to be hashtag ec 2018 make nine or something like that but i will put all the details in the um in the Ravelry group thread that I will open up over the next couple of days to go along with that. So that's my um, future knitting plans and knit along. Um, I hope you join in. That's just about everything I was going to say. I have brought down um, my Christmas knitting acquisitions. I um, don't think, other than my sock, my Robin Redbreast sock yarn and the um, the other yarn um, that I got from Helen at Giddy Yarns. I don't think I've bought myself any yarn um, over the last uh, month, but I was given a couple of um, lovely skeins or a skein of yarn and some minis from my daughter. Um, my daughter managed to, she's 15, um, she had a list of stuff that I would be quite happy to receive for Christmas. I was so proud of her. She got in touch, or she she placed an order on Suffolk Socks, or from Juliet Suffolk Socks, um, and um, she got me some yarn. I was really, really chuffed. So she picked up this skein of um, socks, yeah, from Coop Knits in the Obsidian colourway. I love that. Just lovely brownie colour. And she also picked up... Um, three minis from Julie at Suffolk Socks of her opal minis. Um, Julie only had three left in the shop, so my daughter took all three. The bottom ones are the same and the top one is slightly different. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was the yarn that I got for Christmas. I was really pleased with that. I was very proud of my daughter. And then my, um, my in-laws bought me the most beautiful book. Um, it's this. You may well have seen it or you may well own a copy yourself. It's Slow Knitting. Um, a journey from sheep to skein to stitch. Um, and it's um, from the back, it says, like the, like the slow food and slow living movements, slow knitting encourages knitters to step back, pare down and celebrate the craftsmanship of their work. So there are chapters on sourcing, um, carefully producing, thoughtfully, um, thinking environmentally, experiment fearlessly and explore openly. I think that's a, um, a good mantra for all crafters um, around the world. And it's just a beautiful book. I will be very careful as to what I show you. Um, just some really lovely pictures. Um, Essentially, in each each of those chapters, there's um, a piece of writing about um, a yarn supplier um, or a yarn dyer. They talk to. Let's have a look at the index. They talk to people like Green Mountain Spinnery, to Julie Aslan, uh, to Quince and Co to O Wool, to Jill Draper Make Stuff. And then there are also patterns um, by, for example, Bristol Ivy, Nora Gorn, um, Michelle Wong, Kirsten Kapoor. So um, it's, it's just, it's a beautiful book. Um, I love the photography in it. The writing is gorgeous um, and I would highly recommend that. It is quite American based, um, but um, yeah, it's beautiful. A real coffee table book. So those are my, those are my yarny acquisitions over Christmas.
anyway, that's all I wanted to talk to you about today. I've been talking for around about an hour. I think there were, I think once I've edited this down, it will be slightly less than that. There are a few long pauses um, and a few bits of absolute rubbish that I spoke throughout the hour. So I will cut those out. Um, apologies um, for the amount of editing that had to go into the last episode. I was really out of practice and I was very conscious that there were lots of cuts and lots of edits throughout that. I hope this one is slightly better. I hope this one has slightly fewer ums and ers in it because I think there were quite a lot in the last one. It's just practice and, um, there you go, there's one. Uh, not um, not having podcast for a few months previously. Um, it was slightly difficult to do. And this sort of thing doesn't really come naturally to me. So um, if you don't like the ums, just block your ears. Anyway, that is all I'm going to say for this episode 13. Thank you ever so much for spending a bit of time with me today. Can I also say thank you ever so much, seeing as it's the new year, thank you ever so much for all the interaction that uh, we've had together over the last year, whether that be here on the podcast or on Instagram or even in the Etsy shop. Thank you for every like, comment, look at a photo, buying a bag, whatever it is. Thank you ever so much. Um, in terms of the Etsy shop, um, I'm focusing on sheet bags for January. I'm going to rattle through a load of those and um, get through quite a bit of the list, I hope. Um, if you haven't heard from me, it's not that the sheet bag list is not happening. Um, it's just December and November were quite slow months for various reasons. Um, if, if you haven't heard from me, you haven't been forgotten. It's just I haven't got to you on the list. Um, so I will be doing so over the coming months. I also have a couple of new bag designs that I will be pulling together um, and will be showing those off uh, over the next few months. Um, I would imagine that there will be a shop update in February, um, but there certainly won't be one in January because I would like to I'd like to uh, do the sheet bags for January. So that is all. Thank you again for watching. If you have enjoyed what you've seen, please do give me a thumbs up. It helps to share the love and don't forget to subscribe. Um, and then you'll be notified of when I up, uh, upload another podcast in the future. So until then, um, wishing you all a very happy new year again. I hope you have a happy January. I will probably be back at the end of January with a roundup of what I've been working on. Um, details of everything I've been speaking about will be in the show notes below and in the Ravelry group. So until the next time, until episode 14, thank you very much and see you soon. Bye bye. Hello. <laughs> Start again. Hello. Well, <laughs> oh no, no, no. Blah, 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 blah. Rewind, rewind. Christmas break. Um, we haven't got very far with it. We've done the outs. Whoops. We won't include that bit. Uh -huh.